Hey team, I'm Maddie. Welcome to Science Side Up. Um, today we're going to continue our talk about atmospheric circulation by learning about the Hadley, Farrell, and Polar cells. Hey team, so I'm filming several videos today, uh, so you might notice the next few I've got my very cool tank top my sister got for me in Laos on. I promise I own other clothes, I'm just uh, trying to develop a backlog so I can not run into the whole, oh god, we don't have heat, it's too cold to film, guess I can't put a video out issue that I ran into. So, anywho. Hadley, Farrell, and Polar Cells. So in the last video, we learned about the Hadley cell. So let's review that briefly. Here is planet Earth. Um, and you know what I'm gonna do? I don't know why I drew that arrow, that's just a habit. We're just gonna think about half of Earth right now. We're just gonna think about the Northern Hemisphere. So here is the equator, and here is the North Pole. Um, so this will be about 30 degrees north, and that is about 60 degrees north. So in the last video, we learned that uh, specifically because of the fact that the equator is heated more, receives more direct incoming solar radiation than the pole, we have, it is hot over here and it is cold over here and nature does not like that. It wants to mix everything together. So we see air at the equator rise and then it moves northward. And because of conservation of angular momentum, this cell breaks down and starts to sink back to the surface around 30 degrees north and then that would travel, that air would travel back to the equator along the surface. And this is our Hadley cell. Okay, so now um, let's think about what's gonna go on poleward of this descending leg of the Hadley cell. That is, that is a good thing to consider. I'm just gonna switch colors. Let's use yellow. I like yellow. So we have air that is sunk down to the surface. Um, there's no reason why this air at the surface should only go this way, right? So some, we've got air coming down, it hits the ground, it's gotta go somewhere, but it's kinda gonna go splat and go in all directions. But we're just looking along a single longitude or an average picture right now. So we'll just draw that some of this is going to travel north along the surface. Um, that cell, um, it's going to actually start to rise at about 60 north and then head back south. It's going to kind of run into that poleward arm of the Hadley cell and sink. So we have this type of circulation from 30 to 60 north. This is called the feral cell. Um, and uh, uh, last but not least is going to be the polar cell. So I'm gonna change colors again. Maybe let's use a nice blue because it's cold up over the pole. There's my blue chalk. Okay, same thing. As this air is going up, it's not only going to go to the south. It's not only gonna go equatorward. There's no reason why some of it can't come back up north. We would sink and then return back here, rising air. That way, here is our polar cell. Um, and so we get, we know that the Hadley circulation, right, was driven by this desire to move my warm air from here, from the equator, poleward. Um, but its size was set by 
angular momentum. Same is gonna be true of the ferrule and the polar cell. Collectively, what these three circulating cells do is they work to transport heat from the equator to the pole. Um, and we get the three different ones because we are balancing um, conservation of angular momentum with that driving force of it being hot here and cold here. Um, so this is our basic structure. Now let's talk about what this means for global weather patterns. Um, so we talked about this a little bit in the last video. I'm gonna use some white chalk to denote some, like relative surface pressure. So anywhere we have air moving away, moving up, right? Um, we're going to see low surface pressure and anywhere we have air coming down, pushing down on the surface, we're gonna have high surface pressure. So we'll have low pressure at the equator, high pressure around 30 north. Um, we've got air running away from the surface at 60, so that's gonna also be a low pressure system. And we'll have high pressure here at the North Pole. And this is, um, if I forget to say this, this is all reflected um, into the Southern Hemisphere. It'll just be a mirror image. So we have net lows, high, low, high. And then what does that mean for clouds? Well, I want you to start thinking that low pressure, net rising air is going to be related to clouds. So let's draw some fluffy clouds here at the equator, here at around 60 north. Um, and no clouds here around 30 north and here at the North Pole. And we saw last time that if you track about 30 degrees around the globe, you run into a lot of desert regions, which is exactly what we would expect from this global circulation picture of high pressure. Okay, team. So let's talk about what surface winds we get because of those three solids, our Hadley polar and feral cells. Surface winds. Um, as a little reminder, let's just draw a sketch over here. If here's our equator, here's the North Pole. This is 30, 60. Because of the Hadley cell, surface winds are gonna be going from 30 towards the equator, right? The air travels along the surface back towards it. So, but we get a really interesting thing from the Coriolis effect, which is rooted in conservation of angular momentum. Um, and what that is, is this is gonna get deflected. If the, tr if the air parcel is trying to go like this, it actually gets deflected to the right. And one way to think of that is um, an air parcel here has to be moving slower than an air parcel here in order for them to be moving with the earth at the same rate. So if I try to just bring this guy down, he's gonna get deflected behind the parcel that was already here. So this goes like this. Um, there's my surface winds. And um, in the Southern Hemisphere, it's deflected to the left for the same reasons. So it goes like this. So we get these really strong winds at the surface there in the tropics. Um, these you might know, uh, have heard called the trade winds. These were very important in the days of sailing ships. Um, so you wanted to be able to travel along the equator, you're gonna go a lot faster. Unlike if we're near 30 degrees north, um, where we would have air trying to move to 60 degrees north on that um, surface leg of the feral cell, right? We get, uh, doosh, there we go. So we get um, winds going in like opposite directions at the surface around 30 north and south. Those were called the horse latitudes um, or possibly the doldrums is, is a term I have heard. Um, these are not very great places to sail. 
What I do also want to say is that these three cells, the Hadley, the Feral, and the Polar cells, break the Earth up into these three main regions that we meteorologist-type humans like to talk about. So basically, the weather behaves very differently in those three regions. So here, between plus and minus 30 degrees, these are the tropics. There's the weather in the tropics. Um, we'll do blue if we look north of 60 degrees or south of 60 south. Those are the polar regions. Very cleverly named. And last, but certainly not least, where arguably the most interesting weather occurs is between 30 and 60 degrees in either hemisphere. And those are referred to as the mid latitudes. So where can I write that? Here we go. Mid, mid latitudes, boop. So the mid-latitudes weather gets a very interesting, right? There's a reason we can get tornadoes in the mid-latitudes, but not um, and along the equator. Um, it's it just very different dynamics. And so what we're gonna do in the next few videos is talk about um, some climate feedbacks. So that's gonna be um, how does um, a rise in CO2 and a rise in surface temperature interact with the specific environment of some of these different regions and does that either amplify or like weaken the warming effect so there's lots of different feedbacks we're going to hit some of the like most well-known ones and we're going to start with um ice albedo effect and arctic amplification so that'll be the next video okay team that's all i've got for you today i hope you and those you care about are well um, please like, subscribe, don't forget to be kind, and I will see you all next time. Bye team!